we usually make a lot of money from these extremely cheap items and I can find them everywhere. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about an extremely cheap item that most anybody out there should be able to find some of pretty much all of the time, routinely. I pick up mass quantities of vintage greeting cards. I've got a couple hundred here. We've already sorted out the ones we're not going to sell. These are just the ones we're going to be selling individually. So there's a lot of money to be had in these. Greeting cards in general can sell for some phenomenal money. Usually I can buy them at estate sale auctions, flea markets, garage sales without a doubt, pretty much anywhere out there I can find them. I found them at thrift stores, I found them at Savers before, many different places. Even NOS shows up at places like that. Now the vast majority of greeting cards won't be worth very much money, but if you get vintage ones, nice ones, nice vintage graphics, war related, tied to someone famous, tied to a business that's well known, or any of those other factors, can increase the value of what you find. Now I've picked out a few here, we're gonna look at up close in just a few moments here, just to give you some ideas on what turns up and what to be looking for specifically. Now Halloween cards are usually some of the hottest ones out there, vintage ones. Now Halloween cards in general can sell for some good money. You need to get the vintage ones though. 1960s or before are the best ones. 1920 for any of these is probably one of the key periods where they carry some good value for modern day ones. Obviously they can go way back. We've had a few from the 1780s in the past that sold for hundreds of dollars. Now we routinely sell Christmas cards from the Victorian era for tons of money. We've sold some upwards of $600 a piece on many occasions. Routinely sell them from 50 to 100 150 all the time so the value is there now when you're at an estate sale or even in some cases a garage sale, I always ask for them sometimes many people won't assume they carry a value because they're used may not have the envelope it may just be loose stacks of cards those are usually the best and I can get them cheaper there than anywhere else now the lot I just picked up there was probably close to 500 cards in the lot all vintage now a good chunk of them almost 60 percent aren't going to carry a huge value and aren't really worth me listing especially individually so those will be auctioned off locally here in a big lot and I'll get all my money back from the initial purchase and probably make a few bucks and then I will piece out bag by bag all of the ones that we got that will carry a value so that's how I do it with these. You're never going to have an entire lot that's all worth money. It just doesn't work that way. I bulk out what's not worth me selling, and then I individually price these and list them separately. 10 bucks is my bottom end for anything. So if it's in these bags, I should at least get 10 bucks for them. Now I've got hundreds of cards here. Now I invested 50 bucks into these from a picker of ours that we've been purchasing from, geez, for probably a decade or so as of this point constantly puts these together a few here a few there i'll get a call once in a while and then boom off i go and i can instantly go out and pick these up from him so it's a good quick turnaround for me it's a good quick turnaround for him it's things that most people don't think carries a value so he can get them cheap i can get them cheap if I go to garage sales, flea markets, estate sales, all those sources, they are out there. Let's look at a few close-ups now to show you some of the interesting ones that can turn up in these sorts of lots. So this is just a small assortment from that purchase. Now, I usually can buy these in hundreds at a time. What you really want are the earlier ones, the brighter ones, the ones with Santa Claus, cute kids, or anything along that line. Coast in, uh, this is probably 30s or 40s or so. It's pretty cute. Something like this, again, these all should sell in the $10 to, say, $57.50 range. There might be a few that go higher because of some other connections to them, but that's about average. Even like this one here, it's got multicolored. It's pretty unique. Uh, not in bad condition. Um, three wise men. Something like this, again, 15 bucks maybe. Now, this one's from a known artist. Uh, it's signed over here as well. Interesting topic. It has a Inuit uh, seals bouncing the ball, circus related. Something like this would obviously be worth more than the typical one. This one here, same thing. You've got an Uncle Sam anthropomorphic teddy bear Christmas band. It's got a lot tied to it, and it's a pop-up, as you can see. So 20 bucks maybe in that range. 
Something like this now with multiple different Santas in it like this. This is going to go for some pretty good money. Uh, rather interesting. Actually fairly uh, unique in my opinion. Stuff like this you can get 30 40 even 50 bucks a piece out of in many cases. You just kind of have to have the eye for what's eye appealing and popping for Christmas vintage. This is one of them. It is die cut as you can see also. Uh, bare bones minimum like 25 or higher. Elephants, anthropomorphic elephants, uh, unique Christmas candy cane, literally a cane. Uh, the female uh, elephant, very cute skirt. Really nice example here of anthropomorphic Christmas from the 30s or 40s. Again, nice one, worth more than the rest. Now this one's pretty good here too. This is from the Bradford Hotel in Boston, Massachusetts. So this is something they sent out. It has the old parchment style jagged edge here. Santa Claus on a Ferris wheel, probably the manager of the hotel or they had some sort of event going on. Something like this one here might go for a hundred bucks, 125 bucks if it's from a specific hotel, a specific business. Tons of businesses put these out. Even mailmen used to send them out to folks they delivered mail to. Now, most of what you want are going to be Halloween, Christmas, or Valentine's. Most of the other ones are hit or miss, and there's not a ton of them that are worth a lot of money. Easter, there are some cuter ones, some stand-ups, some pop-ups and things like that that will still be worth some uh, big money. But the top three, probably Christmas, Halloween are pretty tied. Valentine, and then if you went down one more, probably Easter would be the next one. Now, this one has an attached... Uh, ticket to her heart. Very interesting one. Now this is obviously from World War II in the service. It has a soldier here. So nice one tied in with World War II. Love the whole works. Again, these can go for 15, 20, 25 bucks all day long. Now here's some designer ones by someone well known and they're hand tinted. You can just barely kind of make out the tinting on it. Individual ones like this from a known artist. These can go for 50, 60, 70 bucks or more if you have the right one. Now, we've had Christmas cards going back to the 1780s on a couple of occasions. We routinely get them from the Victorian era and sell those for 50, 60, 70, 150 bucks. We've sold some Christmas cards from the Victorian era for almost $600 a piece. So the money's there. What I'm showing you now is typical of what you could find on average for most people out there. These are the types of things that are going to be setting up in someone's attic in a huge big box. Another hand-painted one, same pricing structure as the other one. Circus-related one, very, very, very nice one. Our very best Christmas wishes, clown 1920s, 30s. And I believe this is actually from a circus performer as well. I'll have to look this up here as well as some of these other ones. Now, I get these quite often from people who source these out for me, pickers, who know I buy pretty much any mass quantity purchase I can get for um, cards of any type like this here. This is performers, the whole work, season's greetings. They are actually in Egypt, so it's a really interesting topic. Hand-drawn one for someone very specific, too. Uh, this is, again, performers here with their touring vehicle and the whole works. Probably 30s or so. Trangiers. I'm not sure if they're uh, animal performers, horses, dogs, or what. It's kind of hard to tell. Now, this is a really nice one here. This is from the territory of Hawaii, and it actually has a real photo attached on it. Uh, Aloha printed on the card. They actually wrote TH for Territory of Hawaii, and it's another performer from Hawaii, so it's a really interesting one here, without a doubt. 50, 60 bucks for cards like this. Lambert's another performer here. Another picture attached on the inside. Acrobats, circus acrobats. Not in the best condition, but it's still a solid card. Now, these go into some uh, specialty. Now, I talk about China items being worth a ton of money. Now, this is a Chinese performer. Um, and this is a card advertising some of his uh, attractions. And it is a season's greeting. Now, unfortunately, it does have some derogatory remarks, which are something you can run into with things like this. Uh, it is advertising him for some of his performances, Chinese Outstanding Novelty Attraction. So it's kind of odd that he himself was promoting that sort of uh, stereotype. But, you know, that's what it was back in the 30s and 40s. Now, these are Chinese printed cards, Christmas cards. Uh, very unique. It's from an actual Chinese uh, acrobat performing troupe. 
It has a nice inscription here as well. Probably the artist's signature, maybe. I'm not really sure. But cards like this can go for a couple hundred bucks if you get the right ones. There are some that would be hand-signed by the artist as well. This is another Chinese one. And yet another one. Now, this isn't necessarily the typical type of thing you're going to find in vintage Christmas cards. But this is the type of thing you're looking for. Even some of the common cards, if you get enough of them, you can throw them together in a lot and make a ton of money off of them. We usually do five or six decent cards together in a lot if they're not worth selling on their own. That way we can just take a couple photos, fill it up with the 12 images on eBay, and then just let it run with that. Now, here's a really unique one, too. Very large one. World Championship Frontier Contest. Um, Shorty Sutton and Betty Lee, which are performers again. It even has the original envelope that this thing came in. 1946 from Chicago. So, these are excellent types of Christmas cards. Christmas cards in general are something that anybody can find out there. I find them constantly. I could probably get old Christmas cards or cards in general probably almost any day of the week if I really wanted to dig. They're out of state, so sales, garage sales, flea markets, uh, auctions, antique malls, without a doubt. It just depends on your knowledge and your sourcing abilities with this sort of thing. Now, we have made tens of thousands of dollars just selling vintage greeting cards over the years. Tons and tons of money available in this area. Far too many people just look at it as old greeting cards with signatures and things and assume there's no value. Hence, we can get them for almost nothing most of the time. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends. Oscar Mayer, the first name in Bologna. <laughs>